What's up, guys? How's it going? Good. Did you guys get cold outside or no? Well, they don't let us watch it. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. I think it'll be a few degrees before this weekend. I think it will be. You've been to, La I'm sure you've coached at Lambo a few times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a really just a, a cool environment, you know, all the history there and, um, you know, had some, some great games there and have been there a number of times. Obviously, it's a football town. They love the Packers and uh, the environment's going to be really cool. That last third down and then just how cool was that to see that? Pete mentioned that that's something you guys have planned for all week to have it come to fruition like that. Again, it comes down to the execution. You know, we worked it. Uh, we actually had talk, started talking about it the week before, um, getting ready for uh, San Fran or Arizona. And, you know, a lot of teams in those situations, they want to get real aggressive and obviously they're trying to get the ball back. And uh, we just, we thought there was a chance we would get the look. And then when we got the look, it was uh, easy to get it called. Of course, then you got to go execute it. So um, Russ was a little bit disappointed that uh, he had to put so much air up underneath it because it was, the game was in the balance. He really was like, man, I wish I could have thrown it and let him go get it. But it was cool to see those guys execute. If you look at the play, Luke Wilson um, does an amazing job in pass protection. He doesn't get the credit. The credit goes to Russ and DK for the, the throw and the catch. But if you watch the play, Luke uh, Wilson was unbelievable in the protection. He actually picked up two people. It was an all-out blitz. And uh, it, it's great when you work on something, you see it, and then they bring it to life, the players. That's what's great about being a coach. Ryan, right. speaking of third down, you guys were frankly terrible against Arizona. And then since then, you know, you've been, I think, 8 of 14, 8 of 15. Yeah. You know, kind of what changed or what, what did you – You know, you know each about? game's different, Omar. I mean, you, you never can tell. Um, comes down some of its execution. Uh, we struggled really in short yardage against uh, Arizona. And there was a couple short yardage opportunities we'd love to have back, both just execution and even calls. Um, but I've said it all the time. I mean, we're really good when we can stay on the field and maintain drives. And uh, I thought our execution in this last game, I think, I believe, it's been a little while, but I think there was four or three that we converted that were third and 10 or more. Uh, is that what it was? OK. Uh, so that's hard to do. That's hard to do in pro football. And again, it comes down to execution. Um, you know, Russ, Russ's scramble was pretty awesome. Uh, and the one thing that, we, that you see on that play that's really cool is you watch the effort. Travis Homer's got an unbelievable chip on Brandon Graham. He kind of knocks him down. And then when Russ takes off, that's what actually opens up the, the run lane for Russ is Brandon knocks, or uh, uh, Travis knocks Brandon down. And then Travis continues on and gets a big block uh, on the safety or the corner to allow Russ to uh, go get the first down. So yeah, plays like that, you know, where it's hard to convert third and 15 or whatever that was. And um, it starts with the, the execution of the chip and then our guys making plays. And to get skill guys like that to buy in, blocking, I know it's part of the program here, but just to see it come to fruition and kind of. Especially young guys, you know, the young guys. Um, Another big play that we thought that we th thought about and talked about with the group, uh, we called uh, you know DK's number. We uh, hit uh, David Demo on a uh, little in cut, and DK's back in behind him, and he chases the play and gets a huge block. So to have a couple young guys like that that put that type of effort away from the ball, we call it away from the ball, is really cool to see. And uh, our vets do it pretty naturally, but to have young guys that have bought in and figured that out um, is is really cool. DK, DK catch. You guys obviously practice that several times during the week, and you have to have a high degree of confidence to take a shot like that. What went in during the week to the practice that told you that that had a high high probability of success? Well, again, when we when we played them the first time, there was something on film that we ran a very similar type formation, and we saw something on the film, so that started it. We started talking about it. Um, and you actually start talking about those things the Monday after you play them the first time. Hey, if we play them again, hey, just some, a couple thoughts. You know, you start putting those things on paper because, you know, if it's a, a conference opponent, you're always able to potentially play them again. Um, then it's just kind of figuring out the pieces and who to put where and how it works. And then, of course, repping it and teaching them and showing them the look so they understand why you're trying to do that. Um, but ultimately, it comes down to uh, us trusting them to go make plays. There's no question in that situation we wanted the ball in Russ's hands. Um, he was playing great, and then DK, of course, was having a, a terrific game. So, um, our part is the hard part for us is putting it, you know, together. But the easy part is watching those guys go execute. How much of the, the run game struggles last week were on you guys missing stuff up front, or compared to the pressure the run blitzes and stuff that they were doing in the, the, the challenges that were there? Uh, really good question. Uh, a little of both. 
uh, I think Fletcher Cox is an amazing football player. I mean, he really early in the game was causing some problems, knocking people back and getting some penetration, which uh, hurt our ability to get some things started in the running game. You know, the line of scrimmage wasn't very clear. Um, but there were certainly some things that our fits weren't very good when we had some double teams trying to get guys moved off the off the spot. Our, our double teams weren't fitted together. When you got two guys trying to move one, it's all based on your how you get your bodies kind of aligned, and we were off with that a little bit, but a little bit of both. You guys only called, I think it was like four run plays outside of that last drive, um, four design runs in the second half. I mean, is that you get to a point where you're like, Stop running into a brick wall on early downs. It's just we can, you know, Russ can still do his thing in the past game. Play fake can still be successful even without running the football a bunch of times. We're always going to have runs ready to go, and then some of it's feel. I mean, some of it's play callers feel, some of it's situation. Um, you know, Russ was really playing really well. Our guys were getting open. Um, that certainly helped. And then we were struggling to run the ball a little bit, which that, that doesn't happen very often. Um, so it, it's a combination of both things. I think in that game, it was more of. Um, we were feeling pretty good with the with the passing game, the protection stuff, and so that's kind of what we went with. He's talked this week about getting Marshawn more involved. What does that look like? Um, you know, I think we all want to do that for sure. Um, again, you'll see him in there more. Um, the one thing I've learned about him is, uh, you know, he does play really, really hard. We uh, he ran two plays, I think, last week, and I looked over and I'm like, "What are you doing over here?" He's like, I needed a blow. <laughs> so, you know, he's, he's very quick to be, hey, if I need a blow, because he plays so hard, you know, he's so physical with the way he runs that he's, uh, uh, I, I laughed him. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, I need a blow. Um, so, you know, want to get him touches. Um, I think uh, he's just, I, I really enjoyed being around him. Um, you know, the little uh, third and one play was cool. I mean, people know we're going to do different things other than just hand the ball to Marshawn, but to see him get the ball out in space, the, uh, on the perimeter was cool, but uh, you'll, you'll see him play more. Uh, Travis certainly will play. Turbo will play. It was good to get him in there as well, but um, again, is there a number? No. We'll just kind of see how the game goes. Did it surprise you at all the shape he was in and how ready he was to jump back into this after being away for so long? I wouldn't say it surprised me because I didn't know him. Um, the cool thing for me is just the football instincts. You know, I mean, just it, it's you can tell the guy's just played a lot of football and he understands the game and um, it's uh, he, he's a he's a really talented, talented player and uh, a guy that can really help us have success on Sunday. I'm sure you heard a lot of the stories about Marshawn after he got signed from people here. What have you learned about him that you did not know uh, in either personality or in his game skills? Probably the football instincts. Just, I mean, again, it was the first, I think I referenced to it a couple weeks back, uh, the very first practice he was at, we were running a little screen play. Just a, not the play doesn't matter. It was a little screen play, and we actually gave a really hard look where it was a safety coming off the edge, and, and it was a blitz. And I mean, he didn't break stride. You know, he'd probably heard the play for five seconds in the meeting, and was able to go out there and off instincts know, okay, this guy's coming. They didn't pick him up. I gotta, I gotta not only hit him, but I want to hit him and lose him inside. That's the design of it, and he did it like it was nothing. And so. I think that's the thing where, and then just sitting there talking to him about football. I mean, how he understands how everything works together, the runs and the play fakes, and hey, you know, you can use me as as, as a decoy on this one. And um, so he's obviously, you know, extremely, extremely intelligent with the football acumen and just the ability to go execute on the field is is amazing. What kind of challenges does Green Bay's pass rush present? Oh, uh, they're really good. Um, you know, both the both the Smith brothers are excellent. Both putting together uh, great years. The thing that they do with uh, Zadarius, they move him around. He goes everywhere, um, so it's hard to find where he's going to go and where they're going to put him. And um, you know, they come out of the two point stance, which means they can see things a little bit different. You know, so um, they're they're really good. And then Clark inside pushes the pocket, so uh, it'll be quite a challenge for us. Um, but uh, our guys played really well last week. Um, good week of practice this week, so hopefully it carries over to Sunday night. Russ was telling us about his scouting reports he puts together on Tuesdays and gives them to guys on Wednesdays, and then he'll quiz guys on quiz receivers on on Thursdays. And uh, I don't know, what, what do you make of all that? I mean, have you ever been around a quarterback who does something similar? Um, well, no, I, I love it. You know, I've actually mentioned it here a few times that I've never been around another quarterback that does that. Um, he, uh, so I was blown away by it. Um, we love it. You know, it's, uh, it's an amazing, you know, maybe one day he'll show you guys, uh, maybe he won't, but, uh, it's an amazing product that he puts together and there's countless hours that, that go into it. And, um, it's very thorough. 
Um, he has some fun with it because he puts some things in there that makes the guys look and study it. And there's things that if you look closely, you can get rewards and things like that. So uh, I'll actually be up there talking. I'll look at DK and he's flying through it, like trying to look for the little hidden clues, if you will. Uh, I think it's awesome. And it speaks to his, his leadership, uh, the fact he's all about preparation. And um, it's a really, really cool thing for a coach to see. Have I, have I taken it? Yes. Oh, yeah, I look at it all the time. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It really is. I mean, there's a, there's a uh, it starts with the head coach, you know, who's the head coach, the coordinator, where they've been, what they believe in, things that work, things that, that maybe teams have struggled with. Uh, it's fascinating. Uh, maybe when we win this weekend, he'll let you guys uh, take a look at it. What are some of the rewards that have been dangled in front of guys from him? Um, mostly, it's actually, I think mostly it's like little, uh, little uh, like $10 bets and stuff. But you have to find the clue, I think. You have to ask him. You have to find the clue, and then there's questions that follow up. And the questions get harder as you go. So like, if you get question one, which they name the defensive coordinator of the Green Bay Packers. OK, Mike Pettin. All right, boom, the next one might be something different. Name the school where the nickel went to school. And then you work your way through it. So, uh, And then he, is, of course, gets the final say whether they have accomplished the mission, if you will. Now, obviously, you don't view it in any way as stepping on your toes as an offensive Not player. Not at all. So what, what does that provide that supplements the game plan that the coaches bring in on? I'm guessing you guys bring those in on Wednesdays as well. Yeah, so we, how does that supplement what you guys give them? It just, it's, it's just another um, option for them to review and look at. Um, again, you know, we have our stuff that we look at, and he takes some of the stuff from ours and adds it to his. Uh, but it's just a, another avenue. He's got write-ups of the players and stuff. You know, we get more probably uh, specific in some of the dogs and blitzes out of certain alerts and stuff, but he's, it's, it's, it's amazing. So um, uh, would we be fine with just his? Yeah, probably. Would we be fine with just ours? Yeah. But uh, again, I think it's pretty cool that he takes the time to do it and uh, it's very thorough. So um, I'm, I'm quite proud of the fact that he does it. I have nothing to do with it. He uh, did it before I got here, but it's pretty cool. Uh, Mike Pettin pressure typically, or, or do they mostly get by with their, their front? Uh, they do a lot of what we call simulated pressures. So Pet and I were together with the Jets. We were both coordinators there for Rex for three years. Um, simulated pressures mean that they're going to bring a, bu a bunch of different people, but at the same time, they're only going to maybe bring four. So they're dropping people out into coverage. So it's kind of really hard to process some of it because they do it from different personnel groupings. But I think the number ends up being somewhere like 40% on third down, um, a little bit. Uh, less than that on first and second down, but the way they build their pressure packages is very confusing in terms of maybe D DBs lining up as defensive ends and lining up as defensive tackles, and then they're interchangeable. So it, it, it's quite a challenge. Our guys are going to have to communicate really well. Does he still have a lot of his roots in what Rex's philosophy was in that regard, or is he kind of branched off into his own? There's still some. You can still see some of the things we used to practice against uh, every day uh, back in Florham Park with the Jets. Uh, but he, but he's doing some things. Obviously, you see his fingerprint all over it, um, and uh, it's a very complex bit, uh, blitz package. What's it like going against a guy that you have such great familiarity with? You... Well, the first thing you do is you wonder how what he's going to change because he knows that we know him a little bit. He knows us a little bit. Uh, shoot, he was here uh, before I got here, right? For a little bit of time, um, uh, it's fun. Uh, it's going to be a great environment. Uh, they're a really good team, really good defense, and um, we'll have to play really, really well. Maybe the O-line wasn't quite a line correctly. How much does that have to do with the last few weeks? We're not going to make excuses. I, I think it's just we just got off on certain on our, on our fits, and uh, we'll be better this week. We've been working it out there. And uh, this time of year, it's hard to work some of those things a lot just because you don't have the pads on and stuff like that. So it's more of the, 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 the fundamentals of doing it on air a little bit as opposed to physically moving guys. I knew he would attack it. I knew he would love it. I knew he would um, really be excited about the opportunity. Um, just the talent, uh, the playmaking ability, uh, you knew it wouldn't be too big for him. Um, so terrific year. Um, just uh, never surprised me with, with him, what he's able to do both on the field and off. And uh, even the leadership part, you know, Tyler doesn't always say a whole lot, but the leadership part is really cool. I mean, he kind of gets that group together and he kind of leads by example. So um, uh, was not surprised that he rallied to the call. What do you think of the year Jermaine Fetty's had? 
A uh, really good year. I mean, Jermaine's a, a guy that he's out there every snap. You know, he goes up against really good pass rushers, uh, does a really good job for us both in run and pass. Um, you know, I think he's playing really well for us. So, and we're going to need him to play well this weekend because uh, they've got some really good edge rushers. So uh, he's having a really good year. Anything else? Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it.